We are in Sardinia for the press intro of the 2022 Aprilia Touareg 660. So this is the third model in Aprilia's lineup that shares the 660 parallel twin platform. And basically it's been tuned for adventure riding. It's putting out 80 horsepower, it has a lot of performance and it's a very compact machine as well. So as far as electronics, you've got a full state-of-the-art package. You've got an optional quick shifter. It comes with a slipper clutch. It also has cruise control and the uh, trash control has multiple modes that can be adjusted and customized. There's multiple rider modes that include rider maps engine braking and there's the traction control settings that are specific to each mode and those are all customizable and the best thing of all on this bike is you can actually turn traction control completely off as well as abs completely off so for those of you who don't like riding off-road with abs on the front wheel you can turn it off but it also has a off-road abs system so when you go into off-road abs mode it's just on on the front but it is an off-road tuned abs system so it will allow you to lock it up just slightly and slide it just slightly before it really kicks in. As far as the chassis, this suspension has 9.5 inches of travel and that is fully adjustable front and rear. So you can do compression, rebound and preload front and rear. And you've also got a 21 inch front and an 18 inch rear. So it's really dirt friendly in that aspect. You also get a reasonable seat height considering you do have 9.5 inches of ground clearance and suspension travel. And uh, that seat is as low as 33.9 inches. So as far as the ergonomics, riding on the street, sitting down on this bike, uh, it's very comfortable. And it has these little knee niches here on the tank. And you can kind of ride behind the tank and it gives you a little bit of wind protection on your legs as well. Uh, if you want to sit up further on the tank and get into a more aggressive riding position, then if you're a taller rider like me at six foot two, then you might have to push your knees out of that little pocket there. But it's a very comfortable setup here. Uh, I never felt like my knee bend was too aggressive. I always felt like it would be comfortable for long distances on the highway. The bars feel like they're the right height and you've got a nice size windscreen with a pretty good width. Wind protection is very good in terms of how it pushes the wind over your head mostly. Probably right about uh, to your peak level on your helmet is where the wind goes and out to your shoulders as well. There are also rubber foot peg covers which really help with the vibration. The nice thing about these foot peg covers is that you can just pop them out in seconds without any tools, literally just with your fingers. Some of the other nice features that you get with this bike for travel are a really nice uh, GPS holder on the dash. You also can hook up Bluetooth to your phone so that you can get turn by turn directions on the dash. And it comes with hand guards so that gives you some additional wind protection as well. As far as street performance, as you'd expect from Aprilia, it is very good. This bike handles very much like a sport bike and I noticed right away that you can just easily turn into, into turns very deeply and it doesn't fight you and you can get it leaned over nice and smoothly. Also changing lines is not a problem mid-turn because the bike is really maneuverable. So coming out of turns, you can get on the power early. It's a very tractable power so it's not going to kick out on you even if you have the trash control on the lowest setting or turned off. The bike just has tons of composure and it just begs you to push it harder. I did notice that the pegs will start to scrape a little bit early so you, you sort of have to hang off the bike a little bit but I'm not sure if that's just because the bike is just so easy to ride aggressive that I was already scraping the pegs. So it could be a combination of the two. Great bike on the twisties and the power is just so enjoyable to just rev it out. It's got power right off idle. It's good power in the middle and at the top end you can just really rev it out and it just sounds like it's a super bike when you go through the gears with the quick shifter. So we did get some rain during our ride today so that allowed us to really play around with the electronics and get a chance to feel how much safety that you're getting out of this system. There's no actual rain mode on this bike but there is an urban mode which gives you a really soft throttle response and it turns the engine braking off so there's not a lot of bucking or weaving or any of that kind of stuff. It actually is a really nice mode just for cruising around and and you can still go fast but you don't have that aggressively tuned throttle response and it's just a lot more smooth. 
So once it dried up, there's different modes that you can try out to be more aggressive. And one of the nice modes is the individual mode, which allows you to customize each one of the settings. So there is engine braking, there's trash control, there's the throttle response, and several other different things that you can play around with so that you can get the bike to handle exactly as you want it to for the terrain. The one thing I'd notice in the turns is that with such a tall suspension, you do get a little bit of a dive and squat more than you would on some of the lower suspended adventure bikes. But never lose, loses composure. It's always very stable. It doesn't wallow. The suspension feels really good on the street and I was very happy with the performance in the twisties. Once we got the bike off-road, it felt really at home considering how good it was on the street. On some of the smoother dirt trails, the engine is very tractable and it has a lot of pop right off idle. It reminded me kind of of a 450cc motocross bike in terms of the way the power characteristic is. Right off idle, you can just crack the throttle and it will pop up the front wheel in first or second gear, even in the dirt, and it just hooks up really well. So that's nice if you need to get over a log or some big rock or anything like that. In the mid-range, it's nice and smooth, it's not jerky, and then if you get on a nice long straightaway, you can just open up that throttle and just let it go. And the thing is quick. It doesn't have the power of the big 900cc bikes and up. Those bikes almost have a violent power off-road without traction control. So with this, you can actually ride without traction control and it's a very aggressive power, but it's always under control and that's what I really liked about it. As far as the suspension, it felt really good. It's a little bit on the soft side, but that allowed it to just soak up all the little bumps like they weren't even there. I did do some big rock sections at speed and even a few small jumps and the thing never bottomed out. As far as I can tell right now, it's not that easy to bottom out this bike and the suspension seems to have good hold up on the bigger bumps and that's my first impression. So we'll see once we give it more testing. But as far as the suspension action, I didn't have to mess around with the settings at all except give it a little bit more preload in the rear and the bike just stakes glued to the ground. It really handles nicely in dirt and you can lean over that front tire and get tons of edge grip so pretty impressed with the grip and i think a lot of that is just the weight of the bike it's going to be somewhere around 450 pounds once you fill it up with fuel so that really just puts it in a different category of bike in terms of the size and weight and it really feels more like a small adventure bike rather than some of the bigger bikes that are in the 890 cc and up category so i really like that you can ride it like a small bike but as soon as you get on the road it feels extremely comfortable and powerful and fun to ride on the street a couple times there since it was a pretty wet day we got into some slippery sections and the front end would slide out a little bit but because of the size of the bike it's easy to control also it doesn't have a top heavy feel at all they did a really good job of weight distribution and centralizing that mass so so, you know, it's got a reasonable seat height. You can turn this thing around on a dime, turn it around on uneven surfaces, and it doesn't feel like it wants to tip over. It feels very controllable, and I think a lot of people are gonna appreciate that aspect of this bike. If they get into some technical sections, it's gonna be much more easy to control than a bigger adventure bike. So I think overall, what I really liked about this bike is that it's very compact, it's got plenty of power, it's got all the electronics that you could want, and you can use them or not use them. It's got the power that's not so aggressive that you need them, and if you don't want them, you just turn it off. So that's a great little thing about this bike. It just seemed to fit into that Goldilocks zone of uh, size, weight, power, and all the amenities that you'd want in an adventure bike. For those people out there who are looking to do some traveling, but also want a really good off-road bike that they can load up with gear and not have to worry about the terrain getting too tough, this is gonna be an excellent bike for that. Also, it gets great gas mileage. Even though we were wringing its neck, I still got about 50 miles per gallon with this bike. It balanced out early in the day, we were doing about 42 miles per gallon with more aggressive riding, but I think if you're cruising on the highway, you could probably get 60 miles per gallon if you're just cruising at 75 miles per hour. So given that it has almost a five gallon tank, I believe it's 4.8 gallons, you're gonna get well over 200 miles range on this bike. So the only things I would say, these mirrors, they have sort of a, a hard hook angle and they angle out to the edges of the bars. So when you're riding off-road and you're standing up, those can get in the way a little bit. So a more off-road oriented mirror would be nice. And the other thing that this bike could really use is is a rear rack it doesn't come with one so if you're planning on buying this bike and doing a long ride you're gonna want to get the uh, rear rack accessory so you can throw a duffel bag or something on there uh, other than that you know I noticed a little bit of buzz in the pegs but 
I, you know, I had a hard time really finding much flaw in this bike. The brakes are excellent. The power is excellent. The handling is excellent. The suspension is excellent on road and off road. It's got good wind protection. It's got plenty of range. The seat was comfortable. Uh, I think the only thing the jury's still out on is the styling of this bike. I think they went pretty aggressive and almost kind of a, a retro mix. So for me, when I first saw it, I was a little bit not sure how I liked it. But as soon as I actually saw it in person, I really liked it a lot more. So really excited about this bike. It's hitting a lot of the different uh, high points that people are looking for. And it's going to be a great contender in this middleweight adventure bike category. And I'm looking forward to getting more time on it and taking it on longer rides and getting it in more aggressive terrain because I think this bike's got some excellent capability. So the Aprilia Touareg 660 is going to be available with an MSRP of 11999 and it's supposed to start showing up on dealer showroom floors starting this February of 2022. So we're going to have a full review of this bike. Check it out at ADVPulse.com and thanks for watching.